was planning on doing this yesterday, but I got a massive headache. So here's your reminder to drink water. The Pioneer Woman Cup, by the way. Mm -hmm. So also, if you see this lump of fabric moving, it's my baby. <laughs> um, today we're going to go over my favorites of 2021. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to separate them into categories instead of doing like all of my favorites. These are just specific things. Um, my first one that I'm going to go with is my books that made me feel seen. So my favorite books of 2021 that made me feel seen. Um, so I mentioned in a couple of other videos, but stop licking my baby. I have a cat that really needs to be a mama cat and she likes to baby my ch my children. So I think I mentioned it in another video, but I literally have spent the past two years pregnant or taking care of babies. So when I thought of made me feel seen, I recognized that like this year, all the books I've read, the, the characters that I felt most attached to were female characters who are either pregnant, have lost a child, are thinking about starting a family, or have found themselves just like in a point of transition. So the first one that I mentioned, I actually had this in my wrap up, is The Snow Child by Gwen Ivy. This book, definitely Mabel is the main character and she experiences loss of a child. And I, f the, it made me cry. <laughs> the, 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 the scene that she describes in here made me cry because it was just so profound and perfect and exactly what I felt um, as well. So The Snow Child by Wynne Ivy is definitely a good one. Another one that made me feel seen was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Um, I read this earlier in the year and I have seen a couple of reviews on this book and it's the exact reason why they didn't like the book was because this is about several women in different age demographics and their experiences with family, with child loss, with pregnancy, with children, like the whole gambit and I found myself seen by every single character in this book. Um, the main character that you follow most of the time and is in like present day because this also jumps around in um, time but the one that you see in present day she's married her husband and they go and basically like her husband's career takes off and he expects her to support only his career and everything goes to the wayside eventually she finds out that he's cheating and they had just decided to have a child what can you not let me do a video without you no and she goes off on basically like a honeymoon for herself and rediscovers her desire for a career and her wants and it's very beautiful um the other character in this book is not present day i forget what era it is i almost want to say it was in the 1900s but she can't have children so it goes through that journey as well about her basically adopting another child in place of the child that she can't have herself so really felt seen by this book. The next one was a popular one this year. It's Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This book, she becomes a mother and you see her journey becoming a mother and loving her children and wanting to protect her children and discovering that she's not in a safe situation and she wants to find her way out of that and also, like I said, protect her children and she watches her children grow up and it's just a really beautiful story. And I love that family aspect of this book and her growth as well as a person, as a female. So love that one. The next one is on a kind of a different scale. It's a, <laughs> it, it didn't fit into the same category as the other three as far as like making me feel seen as in the past two years of like trying to start a family, starting a family, taking care of children, being pregnant, that whole gambit. It said it's People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And for some reason, Poppy and Alex, both of these characters, I found aspects of them that um, paralleled in myself, and I really enjoyed that. I am officially an Emily Henry fan and will read any book that she produces. I need to read her backlisted story. So if there's any backlisted novels of Emily Henry that you really love, you should tell me about them so I can put them on like the top of my TBR for this year. The other categories don't have as many books, so we cleared that one out. Drink some water. Um, and the next book we're going to do, the next category is going to be books that made me ask 
no, not ask more questions, but made me think. So these are, I, I wanted to combine these two categories of like ask more questions and also made me think because I feel like they kind of go along the same idea. So this category is going to have two books and one of them, I say two books, but one of them is the Diviner series by Liba Bray. So I followed a couple of YouTubers this year and this is one of both of their favorite series. It's um, Olivia Reads a Latte and I forget the other person, I will link them below, but the Diviners by Libba Bray. So this brings up a lot of social issues, which I found really intriguing. It made me think, it made me question. Like I also drew a lot of parallels from then and now. Um, and I, it really made me think. It also pulled up my heartstrings. And so it's a fiction book that brings in real life, real world issues, makes you think about them and makes you think about the society that we live in nowadays and how it, hasn't changed much um, like the parallels between 1920s and nowadays and I appreciated that we were able to do that Libra Bray was able to do that um, take a different setting and give you the same issues the societal issues that we're working on now so I like that um, the next book is The Wanderers by Chuck Wendig uh, it's a chalk but I went ahead and read this I do not like the ending of this book <laughs> I like the beginning of this book I think it took a really weird turn but it did make me think and it did make me question um in this book it does discuss like a pandemic like issue and that's the situation that they're in and that made it interesting to read in 2021 after 2020 still kind of like seeing the effects of the pandemic on our economy and on people and then even now going into 2022 and seeing the pandemic pick up again so definitely interesting made me think made me question really like this one as well the next one is <laughs> books that made me cry I only have one book like I said I did tear up quite a bit in the snow child but I didn't want to reuse any books so the snow child was definitely one of them but a man called oof was definitely one um I just really love this book it is all sorts of marked up and annotated I've already talked about this in my wrap-up so I don't want to bore you too much with it but this one definitely made me cry I had to tell my husband to be quiet a couple times because I was feeling the emotions and I had to be like fully immersed in this book. It was so good. Um, books that made me laugh. This one, um, The Spanish Love Deception was definitely one. I forget what the author's name is, but I will definitely put it up here. I read it on my ebook, so I actually don't have a physical copy. But The Spanish Love Deception made me laugh quite a bit. Most romances make me laugh. I love the banter of most in lots of romances and it gets me. But one that definitely got me quite a bit was Bringing Down the Book, Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Um, I love Sebastian. So this is a whole series. It's about a group of women suffragists and their journeys in love. And I love that first off. I'm actually gonna do a, Marcus loves it too. Um, I'm actually gonna do a video just on Evie Dunmore books because I thought it would be an interesting topic. But Bringing Down the Duke, Sebastian, was absolutely hilarious. The banter was hilarious. I like a little bit of dark humor, so that was funny. Um, getting to know Sebastian on a level more than like what you see in the other books. So you see Sebastian as a character in the other books in this, in the series, technically series. I think it's a League of Extraordinary Extraordinary Women series, but um, and you get to see like an out, like an outwards view of him, and nobody really likes him, but seeing it from his point of view. And him and somebody that he cares for made me laugh quite a bit. Um, he's a good character. The next category for 2021, it would be my top six. So there was a couple of series that definitely made my top six. So I went ahead and described the first book in the series. I'm not going to count it as one of them. Well, we'll discuss this. Okay, so the first one is going to be... The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I have been ranting about her all year long because I just discovered her. The Life Ship Trader series was absolutely amazing and exactly what I needed as far as a comfort read this year. Uh, nautical adventure about ships that come to life, about traders, about pirates, um, family dynamics, and politics. And it is a great ride and I would highly recommend it to anybody who loves fantasy Another one that made my top six was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I know I am behind the curve on this. I'm also behind the curve on all the Sarah J. Mass books, and I'll get to that in a minute. 
but Daughter of Smoke and Bone was an amazing series. Honestly, I didn't pick this up because of the cover. Shame on me. Shame on me. We deserve better covers than these for this book because it was so amazing. Um, it is about angels and demons. Oh, well, two different races of creatures. I want to even call them like really angels and demons. Just one that is seen as like a light bringer and one and then others that are uh, seen as like monsters. So you're going to have like people like cross over genetic sort of monsters and they're I don't know like their politics and there's a war and there's a uh, someone who thought that she was human but ends up actually she's just reborn uh, from a monster and she gets involved and it's just a ginormous beautiful journey Lainey Taylor writes so beautifully so it makes it a hundred times better I fell in love <laughs> I fell in love with all the characters which it's it, which is definitely like one of my favorite things about reading is characters so if you're gonna make my top six I have to love the characters and this is definitely one where I fell in love with the the beautiful lyrical writing and the setting and definitely the characters as well um, another book is Jay Kristoff's Empire of the Vampire now I know that there's a lot of talk about Jay Kristoff and his books my opinion, and I didn't do this for the book talk because I didn't realize it was such a big deal, but my opinion on Jay Kristoff and specifically this book, only this book, I've not read any of his other books except for some of his sci-fi, but just this book. This is a horror book <laughs> and I understand that people don't like the way that Jay Kristoff writes women, but if we're talking about war or we're talking about horror, I'm sorry to tell you, but women are the main victims. They are the easiest victims, and therefore they are portrayed as victims. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. This is vampires slaying humans. So vampires already have an aspect of, yes, sexuality. Like, vampire and, sex and sexuality, they go hand in hand in lore, right? And then you have human women. So, yes, they are going to be portrayed as victims. Yes, they are probably not going to be called by very nice names throughout the book. But I digress. If we want to talk more about that, maybe I need to make a, 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 a part two to Empire of the Vampire because I really love this book. Um, love the dark vampire. Love the dark horror. I loved the characters. I loved the journey. It did not take me long to read this book because I just loved it so much. I love the formatting. I love the photos. Um, this is about a man in the middle of a war between vampires and humans and vampires taking over the world and his journey as almost like a priest like character like a like a warrior priest character and how he goes about surviving the war his role in it the next book is once there were wolves by charlotte mcconaughey uh i spoke about this in a previous video as well but I really loved this book. It was only like 300 pages, which is odd for me. I normally have to have a longer book, or it's only like 250 pages. Normally I have to have a bit of a longer book, but this was a ride. Like, <laughs> I was in for it. Um, once again, characters, love those. The writing was very intriguing, so you don't really know what's going on until you know what's going on. Um, definitely gave off like creepy lots of creepy vibes lots of mystery vibes i just really enjoyed this one um it's very short i'd recommend people read it um yeah plus the female character in this one i think could also be one of those characters that i feel seen by it was really beautiful almost made me cry it, it follows under a lot of cat categories which is think why i think i put it went ahead and put it in the top six but yeah I, it's this is a different way of doing like 2021 favorites um, slash books I've read in 2021. Tell me if you like it. If you do, make your own video. Tell me what your top categories are um, and how your books fit into that. I'll put all of the I'll put all of the categories down below so that you can do the video as well. Tag me in it. Tell me what you guys think of my selection. If you felt the same way about these books. If you have any recommendations based on my favorites of this year for next year, I'm actually kind of putting together curating my 2022 tbr what books i'm gonna put at the top what books i might have to unhaul but yeah hopefully you guys like the way i did that i thought it was a little bit more unique than just telling you what my favorite books were 
and hopefully you got to know me a little bit better as well especially with like the I love the category of books that make me feel seen I wanted to do a whole video on that and I might actually end up having to do that and we'll just do it like all the years not just 2021 but all the years I have been reading but anyways um hope you guys are having a wonderful January so far it is snowing outside right here like we're about to get three inches of snow so I'm definitely in my happy place I want to be drinking warm drinks but like I said anyways um you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I will talk to you soon